Hey everyone, we're looking at a Williams System 9 board from a Space Shuttle. Uh, it's a customer board, uh, it's been sent in as it's not booting, or at least it's not playing a game. So, I've powered it on already and we've got zero, so I'm just going to reset it again. Give it a sec. Yeah, so we get the zero, which kind of indicates it should be running, but it isn't. So, if we have a look at the displays, we've got just zero, so nothing going on there. I've got a diagnostic connector. So we can try and go into test mode. We try and go to audit. It's nothing. So it's not responding to input on the diagnostic connector. Nothing on the displays. But it looks like it's booted. Let's press test switch. Nothing different. So let's see what's going on. So strobe lines are static or missing. Oh, I put that in the wrong pin then. So we're all static. Oh, the data. Oh, we've got activity on the data lines. So we've got the data lines, but no strobes. So obviously nothing can happen on the displays if we're not actually selecting any of the digits with the strobes. Um, so strobe lines, I believe, are decoded by the 74154. So we'll check that out, make sure it's actually getting selected. I'll just check the pin out to make sure I was right. So outputs are every pin pretty much, apart from 23, so 24 is power, 23, 22, 21, and 20. They've all got activity. But nothing happening on the outputs. So I was about to say we need to check this chip out. Um, I rebooted the game, so I just cycled the power, and the address selects are now static. They're all low. I'm just going to reboot it again. So there's no point at this time in changing this chip or pulling it out because it's not currently being selected, so we need to have a look at why that is. And I think that's fed from this PIA, so I'll just check that on the schematic. Yeah, that's right. It just comes out of one of the ports on the U5 PIA. Um, so, let's check everything is working on the data bus side of that PIA. So I've gone through this PIA, and it's got all the activity I would expect. I can even see... The button presses on pin 40 when I press the test button and we can see the manual down strobe on 18 um, and we've got data bus activity on everything that we should have but I'm kind of suspicious oh it's got <laughs> we've got strobes on here again now so we've got dress select on here and we'll have strobes on the outputs we don't have strobes on the outputs. Is it not selecting a valid address? It's kind of a time when using a Fluke 90-10A uh, would be pretty good. We could select some specific addresses, but I've not got that set up at the moment. So we're doing it with logic probes and scopes. But um, we've got some address selection going on, but nothing's coming out on the outputs. Might need to take this out and test it out of circuit. Okay, so my initial thinking is this 74154 is probably bad. So we didn't see the PIA selecting it at all times. That seemed to be intermittent. So there's potentially a problem with this PIA. However, there were times when all four address lines were being selected, but I wasn't seeing the output. So fairly sure this is going to be dead. So we're going to take that off for starters, and then we're probably going to be looking at this PIA after that. That's not a great start. I wanted to take this IC out the hole so I could test it externally and verify it's definitely dead. I mean, I'm fairly sure it is, but I always take ICs out using the desoldering gun. Anyway, the pins are literally flush cut. There's no pin sticking out of the board at all. So you can see those holes have started clearing. Um, and then also, if you look at the pins where they actually are, they're pushed down. So that means there's no way, because normally you would get your line and you just push the pins back a bit to unstick them because they will if they're pushed right up against one side of the holes they will stick 
and you don't want to pull a chip out when in the stock because it'll rip all the pads off. So this is far too, with a pins like this where they're completely flush cut and they're stuck to one side and I can't move them, it's too dangerous and pit pads will get ripped off. So what I have to do is cut, we'll flip it over and I hate doing this but we'll have to cut all the pins and then remove them one by one. So that's going to be very tedious. So I've desoldered all the pins individually from the back, I haven't touched the top side but you can see it's not looking very nice here. The pads are half eaten, the tracks are half eaten so we're going to have to sand all this off and put some tinning onto all these tracks to make sure that they are good because they are a bit eaten away at. Alright it's cleaned up not too bad with an abrasive pen so I'm just going to tin all these tracks just to make sure there's no hairline cracks in them and then we'll put a socket in. Alright so that's all the bare copper has been tinned now to give it a bit of protection and make sure there's no cracks in those tracks and we'll stick the socket on. Right, one brand new 74154, I'll we'll just give it a quick test. That's promising. And that's a pass, okay, we'll go ahead and install that. Right, game is powered back up, new chip is installed. Let's take a look at the outputs on the strobes. Uh, they're still static, what's going on? Oh, so the address lines are currently static, right, we need to reboot it. Yeah, so we're not done with this repair, even though that chip was dead. I think this is also bad. It seems to intermittently give the address selects and other times it doesn't. So let's remove this. I hope it's not the same as the other IC. Oh no. So <laughs> there's no pins sticking up. So the manufacturing process for some reason is wrong on this board. They've, I don't know why they've intentionally cut the legs completely flush with the board. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, that can cause problems with reflow soldering, where you end up with dry joints. I've seen that on the Gottlieb boards a lot. Anyway, uh, looks like I'm going to have to cut this one off, and that's going to be very tedious, because it's 40 pin IC. So this is going to take a little bit longer than I would hoped. Now I did manage to get this one out whole without having to cut the legs off. There was just about enough pin sticking through, but you can see that I cut really short and they're all bent over. So that was very annoying, and same as the other one, we can see we've got corrosion eating into all these pads. We need to try and clean these up the best we can, and also tin up these tracks here where they've been half eaten. So this is a shame, there's a bit of corrosion damage on this board for sure. And I'll just show you this cleaned up before we tin the tracks. And that's the tracks re-tinned. I've got to re-clear a lot of the holes, as obviously there are lots of tracks next to the holes. Uh, and then we need to clean the flux off, give it a polish up, and then we can put a socket in. Right, before we replace that PIA, we're going to make sure we've got the right diagnosis. 6821. Test. Uh, it's not happy. Let's just make sure it's in the socket properly. Oh, I did have that up. Try again. Oh, it's bad. Roll again. Give it a wiggle. Yep. That's a bad PIA, let's go grab a new one. Right, and here's a new one. And that one passes, let's just do it a couple of times. Yep, that one's good to install. Chips in, board's powered, let's see what we've got going on. We've got some strobes. Alright, let's grab the tester and see if it's putting anything out on the displays. Right, we've got displays hooked up, and that's not particularly happy, is it? <laughs> we've got some sevens and seven million on the last screen. Uh, where's my test switches? Probably falling on the floor. Let me find that. Right, got test switches. Uh, I'm not doing anything still. It's also strobing weirdly, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of flickering the digits slowly on that fourth player screen. What is going on here? Oh, it's not still faulty, is it? What else is wrong with this board? I realised we were getting those question marks because it was floating, I didn't have the ground reference connected, so that was dumb. However, it's still equally broken, now we're just getting a 7. Let's switch it off. 7 again. <laughs> Lots of sevens, 
All right, let's get the switch here. Ah, uh, it doesn't do anything. Uh, well, we've kind of fixed something, because we're getting some outputs to this place where we're getting no outputs to this place. But it's not running properly. It's still got a zero on it, which is interesting. It's not crashed. It's not finding any RAM tests or anything. Um, okay, this is going to be an annoying board. Fantastic. So I've put the Leon test ROM in, which basically pulses the outputs of all the PIAs, and they're all pulsing away nicely. Just show you some random ones. That's the CPU doing. I have gone through each one. But yeah, so you can see all the PIAs have got pulses on the outputs. Um, and we can do the memory test. So press this switch. You'll see the screen freeze for a second. And then if it carries on going, memory test has passed. So yeah, memory test passing, all PIAs are pulsing, but it's not running a game properly. Uh, is the ROM bad? Let's find out. So I've been probing around on the chips and struggling to find what's wrong. Uh, I started looking around here because there's some signs of corrosion. So I got my uh, abrasive pen. I've been rubbing off the coating and I've been rubbing my soldering iron to tin up this track. And it's broken there and there and there. So we need to do a bit of a track repair here. So I've done some track repair on the top where possible and then on the back where it isn't possible where the track's too corroded. Um, it's slightly different now. There's actually more numbers <laughs> on the display. Uh, so it's kind of changed a bit. Uh, oh wait, actually, it's more working than I realised. Let's just fire it on again. So we now have test buttons for the first time. So look, we can go through the audits, although the audits are full of random numbers. If we go all the way to the end to 50, it reboots and goes into game mode. Now it's cycling through some imaginary corrupt high scores. Let's do a test mode. You hear the relay click, it's gone into test mode. And the score out, so the outputs are working fine, it looks like, on the displays, although, yeah, maybe, <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure if that's a display output problem, but it's mostly working. I'm wondering if the RAM has some corruption, because it seems to be putting gibberish into the, all the audits. So I was getting quite annoyed with this RAM, and I decided there's a very good chance it was corrupted. So I decided to desolder it, put a socket in, and fit an NVRAM. Additionally, I don't think any of the battery circuit works properly anyway, as it's got corrosion damage from the past. So, NVRAM is in. We'll put the power on. We'll boot up, and have a look. No more garbage. So, that RAM did need changing. And also, if we go into audits you will see that everything looks sensible now, rather than garbage. Go all the way through and reset. Now the board is now in my Sorcerer. I've stuck the Sorcerer ROM in because my space shell is currently folded up, so not easy to get to. And boot up fine. And looks like we've got all the lamps. I did check the outputs on the bench, well at least I saw a grounding signal. Uh, that's looking pretty promising. We should obviously have displays. Oh, that one's... They both come unstuck again. That's annoying. Uh, yeah, we've got all the displays working. Um, I'm just going to close it off and we'll put it in test mode. So unfortunately we're not done yet. Um, Gameplay wise, it looks like all the lamps and solenoids are working, etc. However, the sound is not working. That's, well, it does work, but so it's fine. <laughs> Doesn't sound right. And then it crashes and makes weird sounds and then stops working. So, yeah, that needs fixing. 
now that we know we've got sound problems, we need to test the sounds on the bench. Now, you can't initially do that um, because the sound is routed out through this connector to the speech board and back. However, there's a little jumper here, W10. So if we solder a bridge across that, that will bypass this connector so that sound will go straight to the speakers. Okay, so to be able to test sounds on the bench, we need the minus 12 hooked up. So we've got a dual rail supply set up for minus 12 there. Uh, we need a volume control, so we've got a flying lead volume control, speaker out, which goes to the jammer rig, and we can press the test button, and we get a test sound. It's actually working longer than normal. Oh, there you go, so it's stopped dead. All right, so I've rebooted the game, and I've gone into sound test, and you can see from the counter there on the credit display that it's basically so cycling through the sounds but we're not hearing any sounds as it's currently crashed. So we'll have to reboot the game again, see if we can get the sounds to come on again. Right, we are rebooted. We'll go into test mode. So display test, and then the second test is sound. There we go. So we've got a whole bunch of noise, and then it's cut out, and then we don't get any more. Oh. Yeah, it's very unhappy. Well, as you can hear, it's crashing away. So I've put a known good CPU from my board in, um, and we've got known good ROMs that we're using. So we need to start looking elsewhere, as we know it's still crashing with a known good CPU. Um, the RAM is not socketed on this, but I can do an in-circuit RAM test, hopefully, as long as the uh, address and data lines aren't in some weird default state. Okay, I will show you what I know. So, I've taken out the CPU and the ROM, so the only two things connected to the data bus currently are that RAM, that PIA, obviously, that's not socketed and that's not socketed, so I can't take one or the other out, so we have to test with both in-circuit. So anyway, we're going to stick it on a loop test, so we'll hit test. And what you see in is we're getting different results on the data bus every time it runs a test. So there you go. You get the idea. It's basically something different every time. Now, we don't know for sure whether it's the PIA or the RAM that's at fault because both are on the same bus and one could be corrupting the bus for the other. The only other thing I can do is test the PIA and see if that tests good or not because that, when when we're running the RAM test, we're obviously selecting this chip. So if I run a test on the PIA, it won't be selecting the RAM anymore and hopefully it won't be then corrupting the bus. So let's see if that makes a difference. So there you go, we're hooked up to the PIA and we've actually got an ideal situation. So we're running the loop test again and we're getting a pass every single time. So you can see the data bus does not have anything on it when that RAM is not being selected. So we can be fairly confident that that RAM is bad now. So I'm going to try a little money saving trick for the owner of this board. So he actually supplied the board with a 6802 in the CPU for the game section and a 6808 in the sound uh, section. So the 6808 needs a 6810 RAM to work, but the 6802 doesn't as it has internal RAM. Now you don't need a 6802 in this position as it has the NVRAM as its main RAM. So we could swap the CPUs over and then we can rejump the board to use a 6802 in the sound section, which will effectively disable this chip. Now as long as it's not polluting the bus when it's not selected, which it wasn't when we just tested it, that might work without having to actually replace that chip. So in this state, with it configured for a 6802, it's been running the uh, sound test loop for about 10 minutes and it hasn't gone mental, so it definitely sounds like it's an improvement. Right, I've put that space shuttle board back in my sorcerer uh, after doing the sound fix and I've already given it a little bit of a play test and as you will hear, all the sounds are now working perfectly. So all I'll have to do is I'm just going to give it a few a few games of play testing, which I'm obviously not charging for as it's just me playing some pinball, um, but might as well give it a thorough test as I don't mind playing some Sorcerer. 
Well, I've been playing it and everything's fine. I just had a great game on it. <laughs> I just realised that that high score is not going to save on my board. It's on this guy's board instead. So, <laughs> oh well. But yeah, I'm pretty confident this board's fully working. Every solenoid and lamp all works fine. Sounds have been working fine all the way through. So that is resolved. So last thing I need to do is basically test this with the space shuttle ROMs in. And as you can hear, we're doing space shuttle sounds now. So that's been running around in a loop and that is absolutely fine. So this board is ready.